All right, as the ring picks up, I just want to go over email I got one of our, you know, one of our people. I say one of our, our, you know, he's a, he's a grown man now. He's twenty years old, but he started this. He was a kid in high school. But let me read this for you. Lou, I have watched your video since 2021. I was 17 going into my junior year in high school. I read, I have accumulated thousands of AMC shares. The situation, for lack of a better word, is a shit show. I agree. I'm not sure why I'm emailing you directly, because I'm available. But as an avid AMC holder and a day trader, I'm looking into crypto. I want to indulge in XRP, but have yet to learn enough about it. I'm now 20 years old. My question is, can you create a video for your subscribers who do not fully understand the legitimacy behind XRP and XLM? Thanks for what you have taught me throughout. Yeah, uh, sorry. Thank you. Nice little better. Thank you for what you taught me, although it came through the most manipulated play ever. Laughing out loud, big hugs, Logan. All right. I'm going to play something here. This is the CFO of XRP. So take a listen. Hi, I'm Christina Campbell. I am the CFO of Ripple. And if you are managing a treasury like I and my group are, you know how complex that can be. Uh, you have to have money in the right place, in the right currency, at the right time to make sure that your treasury is working seamlessly, that you're making payments and accepting payments as quickly as you want to, um, and that you're investing that treasury in the, in the strategies that you want to have that money in. Um, you know, one of the things I've, we've discovered is that crypto can help and Ripple can help with that as well. So one of the things I think about is our customer satisfaction and how do they want to pay us? What currency do they want to pay us in? What bank accounts do they have availability for? And sometimes those don't always match for us. And so being able to meet our customers where they are, accept the currency or the cryptocurrency that they want to pay us in and have that seamlessly move into our accounts is a, is a, is a strategy that Ripple has enabled through our ODL product. Um, in addition to that, you may want to uh, invest your treasury in certain ways. You may want to diversify it from ways that are in ways that are less traditional. If you want to buy and hold crypto, uh, Ripple has Ripple's payment services offer that as well. Uh, in addition to that, crypto moves much more quickly than traditional fiat does. Exchanges are open 24/7, 365, so you're not constrained by local banking hours and local banking systems that are going to hold either that currency and make those transactions take two, three, four days at a time. Um, so those are some of the ways that Ripple can help enable your treasury management and help your money move faster and less expensive. Okay. To help people understand the whole setup, you had XLM. The guy that created XLM also created XRP. They're technically one and the same, but they're designed for different usage. Like, for people in... Okay, perfect example. You look at the Ford F-150. Okay, everybody knows what a Ford F-150 is. You have the Ford F-150 that's designed for the consumer market where they put all the, you know, the Gucci, you know, bells and whistles on it, all the comfortable seating, all the plush computer, touch this, EV, everything, whatever. And then you have the commercial grade where you still have roll-up windows, you know, standard tires. Everything is raw because it's serving a different market. Now you might say to yourself, well, I want the commercial one. I want the one that's for people, the consumer. It's great, well, that's fine. That's what XLM was originally designed for. Everybody to have an XLM Stella wallet for companies to be able to use it, do payroll distribution, um, everything, insurance companies, do insurance claim payments. Basically XLM, was created to facilitate the movement or value of money between organizations, people, banks, whatever it may be. But the people at Ripple understood something. There was a higher level to be served, and that was for banks and central banks and major corporations only. And they needed a different set of tokens on a different 
platform, blockchain, in order for those entities, in order to move instant money. You got to understand something. In this process of XLM and XRP, I believe that XLM will trigger a faster, steady growth. But then XRP, when it comes online, because of the, the, the entities using it, it's going to over, overpower in price what XLM is. So understand, you got 50 billion coins of XLM out there. Okay, and that's for like everybody to use and everybody's already starting the process of using it. Um, don't be shocked if one day you're getting paid in your payroll and your job via XLM because they just released yesterday a mass distribution platform using XLM. So you get an XLM wallet and they can pay you. It's a rapid disbursement. It costs pennies for your company and it's immediately. So you, people don't have to wait. Don't be shocked if eventually, if you're used to getting paid the first and the 15th, don't be shocked if you start getting paid like daily because money can move faster to you. That's XLM, okay? It, it's gonna work great for point of sale, retail, websites, I mean, mobile payments. It, it's, a, it's an, amazing, it's an amazing, amazing platform. The same one as XRP. Now, XRP has a couple of different offerings that are designed specifically specifically to banks, central banks, uh, international settlement house like the BIS, IMF. Basically, it, it's on a higher level. And there's 100 billion coins, but 50 billion of that is locked in escrow. The rest, either we hold them or they're floating out there. So there's going to be a little bit of a liquidity crunch on those coins. But nonetheless, even if they release what's on escrow, there's 100 billion coins of XRP that have to basically manage the transactions of five, daily five to I think five to eight trillion dollars a day in Forex money movement. This is without tokenization. I'll get into that later. But tokenization is like, I don't know, let's say let's say this is a contract that writes up, I don't know, 13 billion dollars in mortgages. It's right here. Well I could write a program on the XRP ledger code and attach it to this. And now this moves back and forth on the blockchain and it moves a real world asset. This could represent contracts of a gold mine or um, tons of farmland. So XRP can move money slash the value of money and real world assets slash assets like, you know, like you bought this from me, I'll send it to you. In the future, they're going to do everything, fine art, wine, I don't know, French poodles, what are they going to do? But it's all going to be token. So the value of XRP is it's designed specifically for the higher end big money users versus XLM, which is designed for them too if they want to use it, but the mass audience out there. Like I just said, you know, it's basically for us, for you know, retail sales, for your mall, for your auto dealership, for your local bank, for your check cashing place, for MoneyGram. For your hospital to you to pay bills for them to you know geico car insurance to issue you an auto claim refund there's only 50 billion coins of xlm you understand so in both of them they're going to be a liquidity crunch they're going to cause the price to go up now they're both iso certified the imf has identified them as stable coins now in order to make them both stable coins they're going to have to have a stable price see the ring the value in both of those coins are not a meme stock. They're not AMC, they're not GameStop, they're none of that. You're buying tech, you're buying a stake in technology. Technology that has to be used. It's as simple as that. It's like, I'll give an example. In the 80s, there was a big, no, no, it was actually the 70s into the 80s, there was a big movement into Arizona, in the Phoenix area. And I remember one of my father's friends, he, uh, sold everything he had, borrowed everything he could, and he bought a couple of concrete trucks, okay? And he shipped them down to the Phoenix area because he knew the building boom was gonna happen in Phoenix and he wanted to be one of the concrete companies down there, you know, outside of New York City, because you know how that's rigged. He wanted to be down there and be able to get the contracts. Well, let me tell you something. That man became very wealthy when everybody laughed at him because what he did was he took a stake in the future development of Phoenix 
and he bought those concrete trucks that he was renting them out on the daily. They will come back at the end of the day, he will wash them up and get them ready for the next day. That's kind of like what XRP and XLM are. We're buying concrete trucks for a new city that's being built. This new city is the digital cross-border settlement and instant payment system of XLM. So XRP and XLM, they're the concrete trucks that are gonna build a new city. And this new city is gonna need a lot of these trucks. This is not stocks. This is not, you're not taking a stake in a company. You can buy a Ripple stocks when it goes IPO. You can do that, whatever. This is not that. The value of this is like buying a Picasso and putting it in a vault. And one day telling your kids, there's something in the vault for you. You're actually holding on to something, not a stock representing a piece of something that could be replicated. Okay, they're not, they're not making any more XRP. They're not making any more XLM. That's it. You can't clone them because they sit in your wallet. It's on the blockchain. It is what it is. You get what you get. So the value proposition of transi transitioning from an AMC to an XRP and an XLM, I can go into the other coins as well, and I will. But these specific coins, you have to understand something. They're actually designed for specific markets with offerings to solve problems that they have and they're going to continue having for the next five to ten years. There's no way around it. That's just how it is. It's like being the closest chicken farm to the first KFC that opened up. You win the money. There's no way around it. Where's you going to go buy chickens? I'm like, dude, look at over here. Burp, 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 burp. Like, that's, how, that's how it goes. Like this is This is it. Okay, you know, you have a late at night, come out of a club, you know, like, oh my God, I'm starving. And you go to the first hole in the wall to eat. Well, that, that place, that, first, that hole in the wall, ain't knew that. If I put myself here next to that club, I'm going to sell all this freaking wild food to the people that come out of that club. You're taking a stake in something that's bigger than you could ever understand. The movement of money around the world, whatever money it's going to be, whether it's fiat paper, whether it's security, stock, bonds, derivatives, swaps, whatever, whether it's, you know, tokenized assets, fine art, you know, deeds on real estate, whatever. That's what you're doing. XRP and XLM, I'll use the analogy, they're the concrete trucks waiting for the city to be built. That's it.